guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Philip, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool color hop game on Scratch. Now, in this game, we're going to be simulating the tiles coming towards us, and also we're going to make a bouncing ball. Now, also, the background gives you this cool sensation that you're like floating in space. So that's really cool. And also, up here is the score. And basically, it changes by one every time you jump. And then obviously, if you don't touch a tile, it says game over, and then everything stops. So let's get started. You click the grape button, and then the first thing we're going to do is make the tile sprite. So basically, we're just going to paint a sprite. So let's let it load. Okay, so let's get rid of the cat sprite, and we'll just paint a sprite. Now we'll just make a uh, rectangle. Center it, and we can get rid of the outline. Let's go to the code now, and the first thing we're going to do, so we want it to create clones of itself because we want more tiles and more tiles to appear. So when green flag clicked, we'll just want forever... We'll create a clone of myself, and we'll wait, let's say, 0 0.1 seconds. And then, when I start as a clone, we'll want to make it really small, so set size 2, we'll do 1%, and then we'll hide the original and show this one, so we'll put a show block as well. All right. Next, we will want to make the the tile come towards us and change its size while it gets closer, so then it looks like it's coming towards us. So we'll want it to do something for a number of steps. Let's try repeat 50. And inside of that repeat, since it's coming towards us, we'll change the Y by something negative, so we'll try negative 10. And also the size, change size by and then something positive, we'll just do one. All right, and let's test it. Oh, and then after the repeat, we will delete this clone. Now let's test it, and you can see that it's coming towards us, and I think it's changing its size by too little. So let's try change size by 10. Okay, I think that's good. So next, we will want to make sure that the Y and the size don't always change by the same number. So here, I started the program, and we can see that here, when it's small, the tile is small, it changes, the Y changes by too much. You can see that because there, that's why there are, like, gaps between the different tiles. And over here, when they're bigger, it changes by too little. So for that, to, like, make sure that it changes different, like, it changes the right amount wherever it is, we will need a variable that I will call tile speed, and then for the sprite only. And at the beginning, we want to set it to a very a small, no, like, not very small, but small value. So we'll just try one. And then in the repeat, we'll always want to change tile speed by... Uh, Let's try one. Now we want to change. Next, we'll want to change the y and change the size by something that has to do with tail speed. So we'll just go ahead and change y by tail speed and uh, change size by tail speed. Right, let's test it. And the tails go up because here we need the y to go negatively. So for that, we'll just do something negative times tile speed. So we'll just do negative zero point, we'll just do one actually. So negative one times tile speed. Now let's test it. And you can see there's still gaps in between these. And that is because tile speed is always changing with the same number. Now we don't want that. We want it to change a bigger value every time. So We'll want to change it, so change tile speed, and we'll want to change it by tile speed. Let's test it, and we can see that it goes 
too fast. So let's try to make it smaller. So let's only take a part of tile speed. We'll only change it, change tile speed by, and then we'll change it by like a part of tile speed. So we'll just change it by tile speed divided by, I don't know, 10. Let's try 10. So let's test it, and we can see that there are still gaps between the rectangles. So here we can try to make this smaller, maybe negative 0 0.5, and we can see that there are no more gaps between the rectangles. Now we also can see that it's very bumpy on the sides, and that is because we have diff we have a lot of rectangles being made, and the the like top corner of the rectangles are popping up there. So that's why it's so bumpy. So we can go to the costumes and we can try to make it more smooth. So we can click on this uh, tool here, click on the rectangle, and you can drag the corners to make it smoother. Now also, if you want, you may use the arrow keys to make it more smooth. When you're finished, you should end up with something like what I made, a trapezoid type of shape. And let's make sure that it's centered, so. There you go. Now it's also centered on the screen, so let's make it go to zero, zero. So there you go. Next, we are going to make sure that these like extra shapes at the bottom disappear. So let's go to the code, and those shapes there are there because it repeats this too many times. So let's try to make it repeat 30 times. No, <laughs> too little. 40? Um, now it's pretty good, but it still has like a flickering thing at the bottom. So maybe 41. And that looks perfect. Now, the next thing we want to do is make the left and the right version of this tile. So I'm going to fast forward. Now I am done, and when you are done, you should have three different tiles, one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. Now, the next thing we want to do is make a costume for each one. So we're just going to duplicate this three times. So I have the first one, we'll leave only the left one in. This one, we'll leave only the middle one. This one, only the right. Now it's tested, so how we're going to test it, we're just going to take a look at each costume. So now only the left should come. Now it's good now, there are a couple of pixels that are a bit out, so try to make it perfect. That's better. Now let's go to the middle one. And only the middle tile should come. That's good. And let's go to the right one. And only the right one should come. Now, again, it's a one or two pixels off. Oops. So let's make it perfect. And that is good. Next, we want to make sure that all three costumes will have a chance of appearing. So let's go to the code, and before it creates a clone of itself, we're basically just going to do switch, whoops, switch costume 2, and then a pick random from 1 to 3, because we have three different costumes. Now, here we can see that the tiles, the different types of tiles are changing too often, so it's very hard to play this game. So we want to make it less often. So for that, we're basically going to be simulating rolling a die. And if a certain face is rolled, then we will change the costume. So for that, we will get an if. And we'll put it before we create a clone of itself. So if, so since we're making like a die, we're going to do a pick random from 1 to 6. And if that pick random equals, let's say, 1. Only then are we going to switch the costume 
to pick random 1 to 3. So let's test it now. And we can see that it changes way less often. Now let's see, because we have a possibility here that it changes from right and then from a right tile, it goes directly to a left tile. So that shouldn't really be possible, because in the game, we want the tile to jump from the right tile, and then has to go through the middle tile, and then on the left tile. So, for that, here, instead of this switch costume to pick random one of three, we're just going to be doing a next costume. And basically, in the costumes, we're going to be adding one more costume so that after the left, after, so it goes from right, I mean, from left to the middle and then to the right. And when it's done at this one, it should go here if I do next costume, right? So it goes from uh, right to left. So right after this right one, we're just going to be putting another middle costume. All right, now let's test the game. And let's try to see if it's possible or a right tile to switch directly to a left tile. So I don't think it's really possible. I haven't seen it yet. So next, we're going to pull effect to make this game more colorful. So right after this next costume, we're just going to change color effect by, and then a pick random from 0 to 100. Let's see what it does. So as you can see, uh, different colors for every single tile. So that's good. Next, we want to make the ball that's going to be jumping on these tiles. So let's paint a sprite. And it's basically just going to be a circle. So hold down shift to make a perfect circle. Bigger. Okay. Make sure it's centered as well. Next, let's go to the fill. And I'm just going to make it black. Oops. All right, and Scratch has these cool, like, filter kind of things. It has, like, a left to right gradient, an up and down gradient, and then a, like, circle or dot gradient that we're going to be using. Now, let's... Right now, we're going to make, if we go on the ball, we're going to make a black dot, and the ball is going to be white. So let's swap these, so then the ball will be black, and then the dot will be white. So we'll put that right there. And now let's go to the code and we're just going to be doing when green flag clicked, we'll position it at the middle of the screen. Let's do zero with zero. And then forever, we're just going to be wanting it to move. So well, well go down. So change Y by, let's try negative one. Let's see what it does. Now you see that it goes down. Now that's not really simulating gravity. It's not gravity-like. So as, for gravity, as it gets lower, the ball goes faster. So for that, we'll be making a variable. I will call it fall speed for the spread only. At the beginning, we'll set fall speed to zero. And then in the forever, we'll change fall speed by negative one, and then change y by false speed. Let's test it, and we can see that as it gets lower, it drops faster. Next, we will make it bounce if it reaches a certain point. So for that, we'll do an if. If y position is smaller than negative 100, then it will we will just set fall speed to something high positive so we'll just do 10 all right let's test it and you can see that it bounces when it reaches that point but it falls too slow and it jumps too like low so let's make it jump higher change this let's try 20 let's test it it jumps high, good, but it falls too slow, so we'll try to make this, let's try negative 2. Test it again. Maybe still a bit slow, let's try negative 3. This should be good. Yeah, this is good. 
Next, we will want to make the ball move with the keys. So, for that, we'll be using these when something key pressed. So, when right key pressed, we will change x by 200. When left key pressed, oh, oops, not right, left. If left key pressed, we'll change it by negative 200. So let's test it. Let's try to move it. And it moves too fast. You can't really see it move. It just like technically appears there. So we'll try to do thing like a repeat. What if we do, let's move this out a bit. A repeat 10 times, change it by 20. And then copy this one, repeat 10 times, change by negative 20. Let's test it. And that looks much better. You can actually see it move in the direction that you click. Next, we'll want to make the ball bounce on the tiles. Well, we're not really going to make it bounce on the tiles. We're just going to say if it's not, when it, so it's always bouncing. So we're just going to basically do this thing like if it's not touching it, then it's game over. Because then if it's touching it, it'll bounce. So we'll put this if here because that if should only happen if the, it bounces and it's at down. So if not touching the tile, which for me, I believe is called Sprite 1. Not touching Sprite 1, yeah. If not touching Sprite 1, then, well, it's basically game over. So say game over for two seconds, stop. Oh, and let's test it, and we can see that when the game starts, it starts not on a tile, so it's going to be automatically game over. So, to change that, we're j basically just here, uh, before the forever, we're going to put a wait until, and then we can just do a certain key is pressed, so if, oh, not touching, whoops, sorry. If key, we'll just do if the key space is pressed, then the game will start. Because technically, you can click the space when you're on a tile. So, you can see that it bounced on the tiles. And then, let's just test it. Here it says game over, and then everything stops. Next, we're going to make a score variable. So, let's go to the variables, and we'll make a variable called score. For all sprites. And at the beginning here, we'll set it, set score to zero. And then every time it bounces, so here, we'll change score by one. Okay? So let's also hide these two other variables. Uh, there you go. And let's make this large, the score. Next, let's add, some, let's add a background. So... Let's go here, and I think I'm going to use this background right here. So let's take a look at how the game looks with the background. So it does look pretty cool. It looks like you're floating in space. So that's really cool. So let's name this project Color Hop. I'll name it, and we can save it. And thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you next time for another game we can make on Scratch.